Ma'am, sirs, uh, good evening. Uh, we'd like to invite you to watch our uh, weekly Green Hour presentation where we showcase some of El Nido's awesome flora and fauna. Uh, for this week, we're very lucky because we have Mr. Ulysses Ferreras, a noted field botanist with us. For the past few days, he's been going around El Nido looking at the different plants that we have here. Well, good evening. Um, I would like to share my the results of um, uh, my survey for the past uh, five days uh, since November 28th. Yeah, I've been here, and we've been running around, um, going around the islands, searching for flowers. So hopefully, there's something new out it, out there, some new species uh, to discover. So, uh, next slide. So just to give you an overview of my talk, uh, I think we have to um, remember some terms um, uh, like endemic. Uh, endemic is um, a plant that's, that can only be, only be found in a certain place, uh, in, a, in a confined area. Like uh, if, a, if a plant is only found in Palawan, it's considered endemic. If a plant is found only in the Philippines, then it's considered endemic. If it's indigenous, it's a plant that that you could find in the Philippines, but you could also fa find in the neighboring countries like Indonesia and Malaysia. And uh, if it's naturalized, it's an exotic plant that's uh, introduced but escaped cultivation. Okay? So there are 8,000 um, different uh, flowering plants in the Philippines, uh, and 40% uh, of uh, which is uh, endemic. So you could only find this in the Philippines, the 40%. And... Uh, Two to three percent uh, is um, the remaining virgin forests in the Philippines. So, uh, in other countries, you have ten to fifteen percent. Some some countries have ten to twenty percent, but in the Philippines, it's only two to three percent. So, the Philippines is um, considered as uh, uh, the hottest, one of the hottest of the hot spots in terms of uh, terrestrial and marine biodiversity. So, okay, so. Uh, most of the plants you could find in um, in Palawan is uh, have affinities with the plants in Borneo, because uh, this is due to the fact that um, millions of years ago, uh, Borneo and um, Palawan was connected by land bridges when the sea levels were much, much, much lower. And um, uh, but many plants in Palawan have already speciated. So. I think uh, a, certain, a large percentage of these plants have already reached species status. Okay. Um, El Nido also has different um, plants uh, and animals that you could only find here in Palawan. So there are three types of forests in Palawan. The forests over limestone. So, so the forest you see over here is a forest established on limestone. So limestone is uh, is a type of rock uh, that that is made from coral corals. So uh, if you think back, perhaps um, 25 million years ago, these um, rocks were formerly um, uh, corals, and then the corals turned into limestone, and then afterwards, due to Earth's movement, uh, tectonic forces. Uh, the rocks were were transported here, and de there you see it. The forests of El Nido are over limestone. So, so you notice that the rocks are sharp, and there are lots of cracks and crevices. So these are characteristic uh, karst landscapes. So, and the other forest is the ultramafic forest, which you can find in Snake Island and um, Pang Panga Island. So. Um, these are the forests that are rich in nickel. So you know the nickel, the, the element nickel, so it's very important for industry. And uh, this, is, this, this uh, mineral is very valuable for, 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 for many industrial uses. So there's this issue of mining in Palawan. So usually they mine nickel in Palawan. Uh, and you, you, you can find these uh, types of, um, of uh, nickel deposits in uh, in southern Palawan, but you could also find it here in um, El Nido, some islands like Pang Pangalusian and um, Snake Island. 
So and the other type of forest is mangrove forest. So these are the the, the ones you see with the um, the what is it? Snorkel, snor uh, the prop roots, the prop roots. That that's like uh, more flex like functions like a snorkel, because the 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 soil in mangrove areas is is devoid of oxygen, almost devoid of oxygen due to the bacterial load. So you have to have to have a way of uh, uh, making the plants uh, utilize the oxygen. So they use they usually have these um, um, pneumatophores or um, um, so it's a different type of food. Okay, so next slide. So this uh, plant, uh, I found it uh, in August in 2008. And it's a plant uh, described uh, from El Nido by a botanist who's not alive anymore. So it was discovered in 1991. And um, first we thought it was only found, you could only find this in El Nido, but we found out that the range is much um, Farther, it uh, it goes through Coron and some parts of uh, some islands in uh, in the middle of Palawan. So, so this plant you could only find it here in Palawan. Okay, next slide. And this plant you you could find this uh, uh, in Lagen Resort. Uh, you could find this growing in um, cement um, uh, cement walls and uh, limestone rocks. So this is a limestone specialist. So you could you could only find it here in El Nido and Coron. So okay, this is these are endemic species. Next slide. And um, you could you, you notice that this resembles the santan. It's a common flower um, you could find in the cities, but this plant is actually endemic. This this type of plant you could you could find it in Tanga, Lucian Island. So it's um, you could only find it here in uh, Palawan. Uh, next slide, and also this one, this one you could find in Snake Island. So we found it um, fruiting. So we didn't take take a photograph of it flowering, but hopefully next time when we come here we, we could capture it in the flowering state. But these have attractive attractive flowers with um, with strong perfume like scent. Mm -hmm. So these have horticultural potential. Uh, so we're recommending um, these uh, these for propagation. Um, and also this one. This is related to the mangosteen. So you have native. So mangosteen is actually a native of uh, Borneo that has been introduced here in the uh, in the Philippines. But uh, we ha we also have um, uh, native mangosteens here in the Philippines, in and in Palawan. Okay. So you you could you could only find this here in and uh, if you visit Lagen Resort, there's a trail there, forest trail. Uh, we marked it as number three, number three. So if you find the number three there, that's the plant. That's a tree. Does it produce a fruit? It, yeah, yeah. It, it it produces a fruit similar to mangosteen, uh, but it's more sour. It's it's you could eat it too. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, last um. This afternoon, we also found a another another relative of the mangosteen flowering. So I haven't identified it yet, but it's it has very large leaves, um, and uh, hopefully um, it's something uh, something new or endemic. Yeah. So so this one, uh, this is quite common in the in the beaches, um, in many of the islands. So this plant, if you could see, if you could recognize the fruit, it's. Um, it's uh it can be used as a uh, as, as medicine for skin diseases. So you if you have uh, if you're stranded on an island and you you got stung by by mosquitoes and uh, insects, you could um, of course you have to have oil and then you um, cook it in the oil the bark and then you apply it on your skin. That that could cure your insect bites, yeah, your your itching. So this plant uh, you could also commonly see it in the beach. Um, and if you throw the fruit in the on the sea, it floats. So the the floating is a strategy of the fruits, the beach fruits, to propagate itself to other islands. So this is a more of like a flotation strategy, um, a dispersal strategy for the fruit. Okay. So this one, um, my friend Kring calls it a fan flower because the flower looks like a fan. 
So it's also commonly seen around uh, some of the islands like uh, the Buluan Island in uh, Laden and I think uh, somewhere over here if you go around Minilok. Yeah? Okay, next slide. So this is related to the sunflower. So if you notice, this is just one flower. But botanically, this, this is composed of many flowers. So the central, si the central part is composed of hundreds of flowers. So if you, see, if you see this as just one flower, this is actually many, many flowers. Okay? Okay, so this is uh, found uh, at, the, um, at the beach. Okay? So, and this one, if you're really very hungry, and again, if you're stranded on an island somewhere in El Nido, and if you, and if you see this, uh, and you're so hungry, you could uh, eat the, the roots, the roots, the tubers of the roots. But you, of course, you have to build a fire and then uh, process it, uh, cook it, so that you could uh, destroy the, the poison inside. So you could eat it. Okay, next slide. So this, this plant is a favorite of uh, pigeons. If you see pigeons around here, uh, it's, this is the favorite fruit of the pigeons. So uh, one tip is that um, if the fruit is red and yellow, it's like uh, most, most likely bird dispersed. So the birds are the ones dispersing. If the fruit is green or brown, and if it has a scent, a musky scent, then it's dispersed by bats. Okay, so next slide, please. Okay. Yeah, it's it's one of those um, rules uh, of uh, nature that um, the bats are more attracted to the scent and to the color of green, and that the birds, their eyes are programmed, genetically programmed to see red and yellow. So if you if you wear red, you're very attractive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they think you're very tasty. Yeah. Okay. So this this plant. Um, this looks similar to the cashew, but actually it's not related to the cashew. Uh, it's more related to the avocado, uh, the alligator pear. Uh, if, uh, the avocado, yeah? The gu guamo um, guamoco? Uh, guacamole. <laughs> the ones you make it to guacamole. Okay? Um, but the wood of this plant, is this tree, is very hard and it resists fire. I have a friend from Luzon whose, whose house has been gutted by a fire and the only wood remaining is this this wood. So it only charred and it, it really didn't burn. So it's fire resistant. Okay? So you could find this in Lagen. And this one is a pitcher plant. Have you seen a pitcher plant before? Yeah. The snake on it is very numerous there. So uh, if you see a pitcher plant, you should look at the flower to see if it's male or female, okay? So if it's uh, so the sex is separated. So some plants are male and some plants are female. So they need an agent to pollinate, pollinate it. And um, the what you see in the picture has a liquid inside, and the liquid inside has enzymes that digest insects. So it's more of like a carnivorous plant. It eats animals. So the plant. So it's a it's an animal eating plant, okay? So it's an insect eating plant, and but you could uh, drink from uh, drink the water from it, especially if the lid is still closed. Of course, you don't want to drink um, uh, liquid with insects inside. So, okay. <laughs> so it has to be closed first, yeah. Okay. So next slide is um, this plant. You could this tree. You could find it in Snake Island and Pang Pangasu Pangalusian Island. If you go really further. Uh, up the trail in Pangalusian Island. Uh, it's iron wood. It's very hard. And um, you could, uh, if you use a bush knife, if you cut, if you chop it off, your your bush knife would get uh, nicked because it's very hard. And um, it's an indicator species of a nickel-rich uh, soil. So if you see, if, if anywhere, uh, if you go to an island and you see this tree, then you know Instantly, you know that your 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 soil, your 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 rocks are rich in nickel. Okay, next slide. And this plant is very is is uh, very numerous in um, Minilok and uh, in the the lakes, uh, the big big lagoon, the big and small lagoons. 
you could find it um, growing in uh, cracks and crevices so but this flowers I think in August so you have to go here in August to see it and the flowers once you smell it it's like perfume but uh, perfume from an old lady okay <laughs> from an old lady okay next slide please okay uh, this uh, plant is related to the yam you know the yam okay so so there's this uh, wrong impression that if you're in a forest you get all these sorts of fruits and stuff and you get um, full you have to really know the plants so that you could survive so this plant is um it's a very tasty yam but it's full of cyanide so you really have to process it so during world war ii during the japanese occupation the japanese uh, saw the natives eating the, this this yam so they tried to copy the natives but they didn't know how to process the the tubers so they died <laughs> so plenty of them died because they didn't know how the technique so the technique really is to chop the tuber so you have to dig it out the tuber and then chop it off into fine segments very fine slices and then you put it in a sack and then you uh, let it um, um, stay for for one week in running water in a stream so that the cyanide would get um, washed off and then afterwards you should boil it for many hours for I think two to five hours just to destroy the cyanide and then afterwards you could eat it but um, I tried to do it but um, I know the animal rights would um, be angry with me because I I fed the cat first before <laughs> before I ate it so when when I saw the cat was still alive oh I ate it so it's very delicious <laughs> So next time. So this plant you could also see in the in the in the lagoons. Okay, but it's flowering in August. So now it's I think it's see it's seeding, okay? So um, but this plant uh, uh, produces uh, fruit with very hairy hairy um, actually it's very irritating the hairs and the the Bornean uh, guys that a tribe in Borneo are very um, you know um, very smart you know they use this against their enemies so they put put the, the the hairs in the food of their enemies so that they get poisoned so yeah okay so they get irritated okay so next slide so this is an example of an orchid you could find in um, Minilok and the the big and small lagoons okay next slide so this is an example of a flower of a mangrove. So notice that the flowers are weird. Uh, it has some hairs on the petals. Okay, so next slide. And this one is related to the morning glory. And um, if, uh, I didn't get a photo of the leaves, but the leaves look like um, goat's hooves, the, an imprint of a goat's hooves. So the scientific name is pes capre. In Latin, pes is foot and capre is goat so it's the foot of a goat so you could use the leaves to cure jellyfish thing okay so you could um, uh, mash it up and then apply it when, whenever uh, jellyfish um, stings you okay next slide okay so this is another flower of a mangrove so notice it's weird it's weird looking um, and the bark is used to make wine a local wine named tuba okay so tuba is very popular in the Philippines, and uh, I think this uh, plant is also very uh, is, is much utilized for the making of wine. Okay, next slide. And then beware of this palm. This palm is locally used uh, for um, floors, so it's locally known as banga. You could find this uh, plenty plenty there in Lagen Lagen Resort. But uh, it, it um, produces an egg-shaped fruit that's very attractive to eat. But do not eat that. I have a friend that ate it, but uh, he somehow he survived. So I think maybe you should eat. Uh, uh, but, but maybe if you eat two or three, then you sh then you die. I think. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's it's very poisonous. Very poisonous. Yeah. So next slide. So this one, I think I saw this somewhere. Uh, in an island, but it, this one is uh, exotic. It's it's not native, but it's medicinal. Okay, 
So we we have to um, we have to remove uh, the plants that are not native to El Nido and has the potential to be invasive. So, because these islands are very um, fragile, very fragile. So you have to because these plants, the the exotic plants, when they colonize the area, an, an area, it deprives the native trees of space to grow. So really have to weed it out, weed them out. Okay, next slide. Okay, this one is popular in Hawaii. It's known as noni plant, noni tree, and it's made into noni juice. So way back in the 90s, there was this noni craze where it was very expensive to produce the juice. But I don't really understand this because uh, the juice really stinks. And uh, But it's I think it's, it's rich in vitamins, vitamins. So next slide. And this one, okay. This one is in, this plant is intimately are uh, um, connected with the butterfly. Okay, so a friend Kring uh, once asked me to look at this plant where with so many egrets, and then I saw uh, uh, at the side a plant with so many butterflies, and then I saw this plant. So I took a flower and took a photograph, and um, the the caterpillar of the the butterfly. Uh, utilizes this plant. So Palawan is host to many endemic butterflies. So it's one of the islands with a very rich bio butterfly diversity. So most of the butterflies rely on this plant. So if you see this plant, uh, you could recognize this as the butterfly tree. Okay, next slide. And then, you know the gumamela? It's a, it's a local flower that's a very popular. A hibiscus. Okay, so it's also popular in Hawaii. But the, the the local the what you see what the the, the hibiscus you see around is uh, actually came from outside. But here in the Philippines we have native hibiscus. Uh, actually, the the flowers are even larger and more attractive. But it grows up I think up to six meters. So you really have to look high just to see them <laughs> and just see them for the flowers. Yeah. Okay. Next slide. Okay. This plant. Uh, I didn't capture it. Uh, I think we took this photo around uh, four days ago in Dibuluan. So I think if you visit Dibuluan again, uh, I think you'll see the, this plant. And uh, uh, when it turns red to reddish black, the fruits are then ripe and you could eat it. And the children, they relish the fruits whenever they see this. Okay? So it's more of like a children's fruit. Okay? And this one, it's a tree you could, uh, that's very numerous in um, Panga Island. So, uh, if you see a tree with very knobby nodes, very knobby nodes, and then if you ask the locals, do you eat this tree? And they say yes, then this is the tree called Bago. But now, this tree, you could eat the leaves, the young leaves, and you could also eat the fruits. So, if you're stranded on Panga Lucian Island and the food doesn't arrive, you could uh, start a fire and then cook it, okay? Next slide. Okay, so this is the end of my presentation. Um, I hope in the next few, more, in the next few days we, we find more plants to, to, uh, to take photos of and um, to identify. So um, the plants of El Nido are really very um, special and unique. So let's all, all be proud of it, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Sir Ulysses. Uh, if you have any questions regarding uh, Mr. Ferreres' uh, presentation, he's around for the evening. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'll, I'll be around. I'll be around near the food. <laughs> uh, thank you for attending our short presentation, and I hope you enjoy your dinner.